Bitcoin goes ouchie, which means Nvidia decides it's the perfect time to raise GPU prices. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today's episode of hot news with crypto stonks, all right? Because, oh boy, <laughs> things went down on Friday and over the weekend with regards to the crypto pricing, and it is not pretty if you were at all trying to get out of the crypto market right now because prices are down significantly. If we look right now, Bitcoin is up 1.6% on the day to be at under $36,000. I think we were at roughly 40,000 when we filmed for Friday's episode. But if you take a look, it had an absolutely catastrophic fall from January 20th. Down significantly. It's down 21% year to date, which is obviously just not something you want if this is a major form of investment for you, but obviously something that can happen with speculative assets. So that's Bitcoin. It's under a $700 billion market cap for the first time in a long time. Ethereum also down significantly under a $300 billion market cap to be at under $2,500. And then Dogecoin down 6.5% on the day to be at 13 and a half cents with a $17 billion market cap. So that's obviously not good if you're trying to make money on crypto. However, there's a lot of, you know, speculation that comes about as this time whenever there's actually a large decrease in pricing in crypto assets. And it's talking about how, hey, uh, the, the GPUs might be available now because of certain aspects that happen with what's going on in the crypto market. Number one, it uh, based, I'm not a financial advisor, but based on what I'm reading and what I'm seeing and just, just the stock market as well, not just cryptocurrency, we might be in for a more depressed period when it comes to the, the numbers that are on the screens, Mason, and all of that kind of stuff. But one of the things that's associated with this is that not only is crypto pricing dropping, it's significantly down from its all time highs, but the difficulty of mining these cryptocurrencies are at all time highs and likely going to continue to increase. As you can see here, Bitcoin is at an all time high with regards to its mining difficulty. And one of the things that's gonna be happening is that Antminer is gonna come out with its new ASIC in the next few months, which is likely only going to increase the difficulty, which is obviously not good if you're looking to make profits. It's harder to earn the Bitcoin and then it's worth less, which makes it less exciting for the people who are potentially trying to get into this. At which point, I know a lot of the crypto bros are saying, hey, but what about GPUs? But the Bitcoin mine is not GPU mining, which I hear you, but Ethereum also at an all time high when it comes to mining difficulties. So that makes it that there's less return on reward for the these GPUs and what you can potentially purchase at this time and then expect a decent ROI on. So regardless, obviously play this out with a grain of salt, something that we've always talked about with the crypto market whenever I've talked about it. I, number one, it's it's all made up. It doesn't like none of this is real. So like it could go up, it could go down, it could go to zero, it could go to a million. Who knows? You can make ridiculous profits or you could, you know, potentially lose anything. So everything. So just uh, don't risk more than you can afford to lose and love your family. That's my advice for crypto stonks. Let's close it out by talking about GameStop having a good Friday up 3.5% to close at 106.36 and AMC closing down half a percent to be at 1797. 120 bucks, yikes. But as is always the most important thing, Surgeon tells this simple method significantly reduces neuropathy. It's genius. My goodness gracious. Anyways, let me know down in the comments, does this crypto crash, as it were, get you excited? Does this potentially indicate you being more willing to look for graphics cards at this point? Is this something that you don't want to get your hopes up for? Because obviously this is only a, a two day trend. It could potentially bounce right back up to like $85 million and then there are no GPUs ever again. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. And I'm going to let you know that Robinhood decides that this is the perfect time for them to roll out crypto wallets, okay? While the market doesn't care about it anymore, let's get crypto wallets. Robinhood wants to shut down GameStop trading during the midst of its surge upwards. Perfect time. Robinhood wants to get in on crypto wallets only when it's crashing and when people are trying to get out. Genius move, Robinhood. Proud of you. Great moves. Keep it up. And NVIDIA is keeping things up. The pricing up, not just anyways. <laughs> 
Nvidia in Europe officially increasing the pricing on their RTX 30 series cards with them saying that it's related to the exchange rate and nothing else. It's not related to supply chain stuff. It's not gonna be coming to the US. This is specifically, according to Nvidia, a price raise because of exchange rate differences that are happening. You can see that it's roughly a five to 6% increase across the board. RTX 3090 is gonna be 100 euro more. The 3060 Ti is gonna be about 20 euro more, but Nvidia trying to keep things a little bit more expensive, especially as we're trying to wait for the RTX 3050, which is supposed to drop later this week. I think the 27th is when it's supposed to come out. The rumors that I'm seeing is that the embargo lifts on the 26th, so we should get benchmarks then, but we got preliminary benchmarks in case you're looking for it. The RTX 3050 actually being a decent-ish performer for $250, like, good in this kind of a climate and what's going on right now. According to Time Spy and Firestrike scores, it looks like the 3050 is essentially a 1660 Ti with ray tracing. The 1660 Ti being slightly, ever so slightly faster, but the RTX 3050 being faster than the 6500 XT by 4% in Firestrike, which is a very old benchmark at this point. And the 6500 XT is 81% of the performance of a 3050 in Time Spy Extreme, which I believe is a 1440p benchmark, so uh, the VRAM obviously showing up there. But 3050 looking all right. When it comes to mining, however, it's looking all wrong because it can only do 12 and a half mega hash according to preliminary benchmark coming out at 73 watts, which gives you an ROI of 500 days at the current you know profitability level and all that kind of stuff. So RTX 3050 might be for gamers or people will just decide, hey, I can tweak this and make an ROI in a year and that's enough. And I can take it away from gamers and they can never get video games ever again and one of the video games you shouldn't be playing right now is Dark Souls 3 at least online because there's a server vulnerability that's happening which allows the people playing on the game to hijack your computer which is probably something that you don't want to happen. The vulnerability comes in the PvP setup that exists and it makes it so that people can run like Windows PowerShell and Microsoft PowerShell on your computer and potentially this will impact Elden Ring because it's the same server that's being implemented on From Software's brand new game. So maybe the release date might be delayed on that, depending on whether or not From Software can get this taken care of. For right now, they've temporarily shut down the PVP servers and they're gonna be working on all of this, but that's only after it got publicly disclosed because people privately tried to tell From Software about it. And as is the case with a lot of companies, they're just like, there's no vulnerability unless people are telling us on Twitter. It's not real if you, you know, submit a bug report. We don't, we don't believe in that, but I, Brett, believe in the Steam Deck. I'm very excited for it, okay? February launch, about a month away. Hopefully, you know, worst case scenario, month away, maybe maybe a month and four days. I could, I could accept it coming out on February 28th, okay? I'm okay with that. And Valve coming out and saying that Steam Deck can easily support Epic's anti-cheat, okay? You want you want anti-cheat games for all that online stuff you're doing? It can support it, okay? Not a big deal. Rocket League, easy peasy. A fart night on your Steam Deck? You can do that too. Get a steaming pile of Fortnite on your Steam Deck, okay? And you wanna know Intel's largest steaming pile? It's gonna be the entire state of Ohio. That's a little redundant, don't you think? Steaming pile, Ohio. Anyways, I'm not gonna continue to bash on that god awful state, but Intel announcing in Time Magazine of all places that they are unveiling a $20 billion chip fabrication facility in Ohio. Rather, it's gonna be a whole bunch of chip fabrication facilities, and Intel is saying that's gonna be the largest silicon manufacturer location on the planet, which I just want to say, you know, usually this stuff comes out in press release, but as I've been watching what's going on with the CEO of Intel, it seems like Pat Gelsinger has a flair for the dramatic. He talks huge game. He likes to say things that's like super incendiary and rolls it back later, but it gets them into the headlines. So instead of them doing a press release, they freaking do an exclusive interview in Time Magazine of all places, which like, are you're just who are you appealing to like who is this for i guess they're shareholders maybe i don't know i guess the the, the typical shareholders of amd are amd bros but that's obviously uh you know stereotyping a very small minority of what's going to be a larger holding of a massive multi-billion dollar company forget what, everything that i'm saying anyways it tells the story here 20 billion dollars chip fabrication facility is going to provide uh they provided renders of this thing which i mean that looks impressive obviously i'm not going to denounce the engineering that's going into it i just have this screenshot 
reminded me of SimCity 2000. Like it just spinning image in my mind, okay? Maybe a little higher resolution, but like give me give me some DLSS on SimCity 2000 and that's exactly what Intel's building in Ohio. That's essentially what Ohio is now, just nothing. Anyways, the impact's gonna be huge. It's gonna be for a lot of Intel's latest nodes and all that kind of stuff. 3,000 Intel jobs, 7,000 construction jobs. It's gonna take forever. It's gonna be many, many billions of dollars and the state of Ohio is expected to benefit from that. Construction will start in 2022. Production is supposed to come online in 2025, but big days from Intel ahead. And what might be a big day for AMD if Samsung actually announced this thing is the Xclipse GPU that's going into the Exynos 2200 SoC that we're expecting them to talk about. They like screwed over us the people who were waiting for the announcement and then delayed the announcement and then came out with an announcement but all the behind the scenes stuff says this thing's thermal throttling so take the benchmarks i'm about to show you with a grain of salt because we don't know how this chip is running but comparing it to the snapdragon 888 it actually does pretty dang good i think it was about 20 percent faster however it does not perform well against apple's a15 chip when it comes to cpu and gpu performance so it's overall like an okay chip it's not not great. It's better than the other things that are on Android, but it doesn't necessarily beat Apple at what they're doing. And again, we don't know if the claims of thermal throttling are true. There's been some like people trying to ask Samsung, like, how does this chip perform thermally? And they're like, it depends on the environment. Yeah, no, duh. No freaking duh. Right. Like if, if I asked Nvidia, hey, How's your, how hot your GPU get? There, it depends on the, if I put it in lava, I know it's gonna overheat. How's it gonna perform in a normal case? How does your phone perform in somebody's hand when they're using it? Just give me, you know, generalizations. Give me, you know, a range. Tell me something at all instead of, oh, you know, it depends. We don't got any good better answer for you than that. And I don't got any good better news for you than that because that's the end of today's episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here for breakfast tomorrow, my friends, and we'll just, we'll spice down the news together. Cheerios.